okay, because I will say because there are some um, very, very well-educated graduates of Milton Academy here in the crowd, I um, told my mom when I was four and my dad that I wanted to be a writer, and I meant it. And then for the next um, 15 or so years, I did very little else with, with um, particularly good results other than reading and writing. But when I got to Yale, I became scared. I was afraid to bring my creative writing into this very competitive, very, um, well, judgmental space. And it felt like a thing that was too fragile and too vulnerable to do in such a robust environment, so I stopped. I then um, graduated and I looked at my family. My father is a doctor, my mother is a doctor, my twin is a doctor, and then my father's various and sundry other offsprings are mostly doctors too. And I thought I should go get a PhD because I can't really add and subtract. So there was no way that I could ever become a medical doctor, which is how I ended up at Oxford doing um, an MPhil and then carrying on into the PhD program. Thank God, as I was coming to my senses, an amazing author came to Oxford to get an honorary degree, and that's Professor Toni Morrison. And for Professor Toni Morrison, <laughs> um, and when I got back to New Jersey to stay with my dad and his lovely wife, Catherine, I, I went and I continued my conversation with her down the street. She in front of my twin and my mother ended up giving me a deadline to produce some fiction of any kind. And um, while I considered very seriously not meeting that deadline <laughs> at some point, I thought that would be, and I did a lot of absurd things up until that point, but I thought that would be one of the most absurd things you've ever done in your life to just be like, hey, Professor Morrison, hi. Yeah, I don't have that fiction that you asked me for, <laughs> but thanks a lot for your interest and support. Um, so I wrote, something, it was sort of something, anything, and that became the sex lives of African girls. Then she read it, and miraculously she liked it, but she said it should be longer because it's very hard to publish a novella these days. In fact, the only person who can really publish a novella these days is me. And that was just before the amazing novella, A Mercy, came into print. So I took the sex lives of African girls to Sweden. My dear friend, Dear, dear friend Kirsty, for my 30th birthday, took me on this yoga and meditation retreat, and it was my intention while in the um, really rather punishing cold of <laughs> Hall, Sweden, to make the sex lives of African girls longer. I was there in Sweden trying to do this, and I went to take a shower, and these people appeared. And so Kirsty and I fled Sweden for Copenhagen, where I wrote the first 10 pages of Ghana Musco, which appear in print largely unchanged. Why, after 10 years in which I finished absolutely no fiction, did this story suddenly come? I couldn't say. I, co I, I genuinely couldn't say. I've, I've quoted Leonard Cohen to death. He said, if I knew, when asked, where do, your, where do your songs come from? He said, if I knew where they came from, I'd go there more often. <laughs> and, you know, I, 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 I definitely, having contractually obliged myself to write a second novel, feel that way. Um, these characters in this story was a blessing, a calling, and an obligation. And it was um, my honor to, to fulfill it. I wrote the essay, Bye Bye Babar, or What is an Afropolitan, in 2005. I was, in many ways, just trying to make sense of my own identity and explaining why it was so difficult for me to answer the question, where are you from? And imagining that others with ties to the African continent suffered from a similar inability, at least to answer that question succinctly. So I conceived of this identity as Afropolitan. These are those of us who were born in Africa, live in Africa, our parents are from Africa, a country they're in, and are fiercely proud of this fact in addition to being, um, I would say, globally minded. Now, um, the term has grown wings. It's applied to clothing and architecture and music, and that's wonderful. I was using it to describe a particular experience, and it was thrilling that so many others could identify with that experience. But I'm equally happy to see the word sort of taken beyond the context in which I, I first used it because I think that is ultimately the work of the writer, to give the words to the world to use as the world sees fit. I think that there are some ways in which writing 
is less adequate for telling a story than photography. And this project, 20-something, 54 as it's become, is certainly one of them. I decided last year that I wanted to visit all 54 African countries and take photographs of 20-somethings. In the original formation, it was 21-year-olds, hence the title 2154. But when I started the project visiting six countries this past summer, there, I just found so many wonderful young people that I broadened it to be 20-something 54. One of my best friends is a documentary filmmaker and another cinematographer. So they came with me, we drove through West Africa, and they were filming as I was shooting. And so we are now in the process of fundraising for the feature-length documentary, which is simply about how 20-somethings live in African countries today. Not the destitute, not the disproportionately wealthy, but your average 20-something whom you might see in the U Street corridor or in Georgetown. How does that person live? What is daily life like? What does that person dream of, hope for? Where do they party? What do they want in African countries? That's what this documentary is asking, and I'm so excited to finish it. I don't think of these different media as separate. I have to say photography, screenwriting, film, literature, for me, it's all a variant on one theme, and that's storytelling. So I perceive myself um, as someone who has inherited the responsibility to tell stories. It is my honor and my pleasure. And if I conceive of a role for myself going forward, I think it's just to continue to do that, to tell the stories that I'm blessed to encounter and to tell them as beautifully as I know how.